I made a video a couple of months ago about how I would learn to code if I could start over. In that video, I explained the specific order I would learn the programming languages. In this video, I'll be talking about how to effectively learn each one of those languages and frameworks to set you up to get a job. Let's get started. The best thing about learning programming is that the basics and fundamentals for all the languages are the same. The general concepts like functions or variables are the same for all languages. The major thing that differs between languages is just the syntax, which you will get used to as you learn to code in a specific language. I say all of this to say the first thing you should focus on is learning the fundamentals. Once you learn it in one language, it applies to all other languages. Some of you have reached out asking me if the way you are learning how to code is the right way or if you should prioritize learning one language over another, and here is my answer. There is no right way or right path to learn how to code. Use whatever you have at your disposal. It could be taking a course, following a free YouTube tutorial, or being in a bootcamp. If it's working for you and you're learning, then it's the right way. The order in which you learn the languages doesn't matter as much as you think. Some languages are easier to wrap your head around and that's why people suggest you learn them first, but you don't always have to start with those ones. At the end of the day, no knowledge is wasted. However, what is important is what you're doing when you're learning a specific language. Let's take Python for example. Say I'm learning how to code in Python. I learned how to create a .py file, then I learned the fundamental things specific to writing Python like indentations, main methods, print statements, method headers, and more. After learning all of this, I have an average understanding of Python, but that's not where I should stop. What I have done is a good start, but I need to find a way to write Python code that applies to something in the real world. What is Python popularly used for? The first thing that comes to my mind is data analysis and visualization. My next step should then be to work on a project where I get data from somewhere and write Python code to analyze and visualize that data in some way. What else is Python popularly used for? Web development. How about I use the popular web development frameworks like Django or Flask to work on a project? Those two projects with Python will give you a better understanding of real world scenarios where you could use Python. When you get a job, most of what you'll be doing will be to read existing code and make bug fixes or add additional components to existing systems. Both of those tasks require that you get familiar with the code base, and I can't remember the last time I saw a Python code base that didn't use a framework like Flask, Django, or NumPy. Working on projects with these frameworks will expose you to real-world production code, further improving your knowledge of the language. The majority of what you'll be doing when you get a job is writing code that handles data. That's basically what coding is, in my opinion, handling data. There is no production code in the world that doesn't handle data. Without data, there is no code, so work on projects that mimic what you'll be doing in the real world. Even in technical interviews, you're giving a data set to manipulate. No one tells you to just code in Python or in whatever language you're comfortable with. You're given a data set and asked to do something with it. Let's take another example, Java. The last time I saw Java code that was only Java that didn't handle any data was my freshman year in college. Since then, most of the Java code I have written or worked on has been using the Spring Boot framework. Now, what does this tell me? It means if I am to learn Java, I have to learn the Spring Boot framework because most of the roles I'll apply for as a Java developer will most likely require me to know the Spring Boot framework. Now, within the Spring Boot framework, you'll still use the basic concepts you've learned. There will still be methods, classes, interfaces, variables, and all of that but you're using them to build something that will better help you understand how you will use Java when you get a job. Let's take one final example, React. Once you learn the basics of React and learn about props, components, and all of that, don't stop there. What are the popular React frameworks that are being used in web applications today? Well, if I'm building a web application that stores users' information, I will probably have to do some form of authentication where I have the user sign up or sign in. How about I learn authentication within React? Another thing I can think of is state management. How do I pass data from one page in the web application to another? Redux. Redux is the go-to state management framework for React, so learn it. Work on projects with it. It'll most likely be what you will see and use when you're coding professionally. When you're interviewing for a role, interviewers don't stop at asking you if you know Python or React or Java. They drill down and ask what specific framework you've worked with within those languages because most of the work you'll be doing will be in those frameworks. Everything I've said in this video so far points to one common theme. Practicing and working on projects that mimic what you'll be doing when you get a job coding in a specific language. In my opinion, this is the hardest part of the journey because it requires patience. Half the time, you won't know what you're doing and that's completely normal. You're learning something new, so you have to go slow. You will have to find a video or an article that someone has made where they're working on a project or working with a framework you want to learn. You will sit there, open your text editor and code with them, following line by line. These videos can be 20 minutes long or they could be 20 hours long. Take your time and code with them. 
take breaks as needed. You don't have to finish everything in one day. That's the part of software development no one shows you. Everyone sees the finished product, but no one sees the hours that you sat down following along with a YouTube tutorial to learn how to build what you made. Those hours coding along with tutorials are part of what comes with being a programmer. Many developers working full-time still watch tutorials because it is a constant learning process and sometimes you just forget things. I have an upcoming project to make an iOS widget for my app, the Optil app. I don't know how to do it, but I plan on coding along with this Medium article because that's the only way I will learn how to do it. Invest time in learning. Code along with these tutorials. That's the best way to learn and comfortably say you can code in a specific language. I will leave a Google Doc in the description with the most popular frameworks in each language along with resources for learning the frameworks and projects you can code along with. That's it for this one. If you want to know why I love being a software engineer and why you may love it too, then click on this video right here. And if you're looking for a full stack beginner project to code along with, then click on this video right here. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.